Okay, now as part of our digital communication and specifically fundamentals of digital transmission, we'd like to cover digital modulation. We'll look at amplitude shift keying, ASK, phase shift keying, PSK, and frequency shift keying. We'll look at uh, binary and the MRE case. Now let's look at digital carrier systems. So far we have been dealing with baseband transmission, which is very good. Uh, for applications over our own cable like twisted pair cables, coaxial cables, fiber but it's not always possible to use baseband for example we have to use passband communication or what we call carrier communications which requires modulation we need this remember when we discussed the modulation sometimes for frequency division multiplexing to control the propagation characteristics if we have more than one signal, all of these requires changing the frequency. In that case, we have to use carrier modulation or um, we have to use passband communication. So the application that requires passband, any wireless communication, where we want to control the, uh, the size of the antenna, microwave application, satellite, wireless mobile, all of these are nowadays digital communication systems that require carrier. So what's the main difference? What happens if we shift the signal in frequency? If you recall from modulation, the bandwidth requirement will become double. So if we want to summarize a table with the maximum possible rates, we have to watch for two scenarios. The first scenario is the baseband scenario, where the maximum possible rate is twice the bandwidth. And this is what we have covered when we discussed the channel capacity. And for the pass band, the bandwidth required will be more or the amount of data rate for a given bandwidth will be half of this why because once we modulate the signal once we shift it into frequency it becomes double sideband the bandwidth requirements become double what you see in the left hand column here is the maximum possible rate that happens if you're using sync or r rule of factor equal to zero but in general if you want to generalize this is the relation that that relates the bandwidth to the, mag to the maximum rate for a given raised cosine. Okay, if, of course, if we make R equal to zero, we go back to this equation. So here, the baseband scenario, for the pass band, we lose half of the amount of rate. So I made this two to be in red color. So the first thing you need to know to relate the bandwidth to the data rate is to, to, uh, to identify the, the channel. Is it baseband or is it pass band? So the first price we pay for, uh, we pay for, for, uh, going to digital carrier systems is double the bandwidth requirement and we have to do something about this but you need these two formulas to be able to uh, relate bandwidth to the rate now here we summarize the relation the bandwidth requirement for a pass band the bandwidth required now will be the rate divided by two this is in the case of base band okay times one plus r i'm just repeating the equation now, if the case for pass band, this two is going to be dropped because the bandwidth will become higher or the rate becomes less. So watch for this difference. This is for base band. This is for digital carrier systems or pass band. Now, pass band transmission requires double the bandwidth of base band transmission. Therefore, the minimum bandwidth required for the transmission of RS pulses using carrier systems is RS uh, hertz. The bandwidth equals to the rate uh, in terms of minimum requirement and we can make the relation okay if you want this is all about remember that this equation only relate the symbol rate rs is a symbol rate r sub s stands for the symbol rate rs is for the symbol rate while rb stands for the bit rate how are they related they are related by the following equation usually the symbol rate is less than the bit rate and if in the case of binary the symbol rate equal to uh, the bit rate. So we will need to know that this equation that comes from the channel capacity theorem is about the symbol rate. To go into data rate, we have the following relation. Now let's do an example. A satellite transponder has a bandwidth of 36 megahertz Earth station use raised cosine filters 
with m equal to uh, with mre p is k this is not important for now to transmit 256 megabit per second what is the minimum possible value of m and the associated roller factor now remember we have one relation that relates the bandwidth to the rate we need to know is this a pass band or a base band since it says in the equation it's a satellite transponder it means it's a wireless channel and this is our hint that satellite communication indicates we have a pass band communication so we can start with the basic equation there is no factor we don't divide by two there is no factor of two here because it's a pass band communication now what is given in the equation the bandwidth is given okay we can the bandwidth is given here and um, luckily in addition to the bandwidth this is the bandwidth we also are given uh, unfortunately this is not the, the the symbol rate this is bits rate huh? because it says megabits per second so how do we convert this into bits remember the relation we had r is equal to rb over im or log m to base 2. okay it sounds like we have an equation with two unknowns because r is unknown and m is unknown there's a keyword in the question the keyword is this it says what is the minimum possible value of m this keyword will make things much simpler so let's see how let's arrange for the value of m and r i'm going to uh, rearrange the equation so from here to here it's just got one plus r on one side and next i'm going just to solve for r so uh, if you substitute the numbers here bandwidth rb this is from the question now again we have two unknowns now uh, if you solve for r i just got one to the second side okay this number we got after the division uh, but to recall we know that r is between zero and one the role of facts the role of factor is to range between zero and one so for this to happen we should have a positive value of r now when we start look at this term this has to be greater than one so that when we subtract one we get positive quantity we'll start playing with m try m equal to two it's not good enough because this will give you one and you get a negative number so m is equal to two is not acceptable and then we go on to m equal to four and we keep trying until we get the first positive number above zero and that should be m equal or log two base m this must be eight for this to happen we try powers of two m equal to two then four then eight sixteen and so on the moment you get to log of base m equal to eight it means that m equals to 256 that's the minimum possible because this expression multiplied by this quantity should be greater than one okay of course we can solve as an equality or we can just try different numbers so m equal to 256 now it says what is the associated role of factor we can go back now to our original equation now there's only one unknown you substitute m is 256 rb is given and bandwidth and if you solve for r the value of r would be 0.125 okay so this is the example please if you did not get it stop pause the video and you can redo it in a slower term now let's discuss the typical types of digital carrier modulation there are different types so we can represent the information in the amplitude of the carrier and this is called this is like am in analog but this is now called ASK and this is amplitude shift keying the information which is like one here it's represented in the amplitude of the carrier okay. in the baseband version what we had is something like this pulses but now we're going into digital carrier modulation digital carrier modulation and this is why the information is in the amplitude of the carrier we have one here zero okay so it's called ASK amplitude shift keying because in digital you go shift from one level to another now in the second example the second type of digital carrier modulation we have frequency shift keying the information is represented in the frequency of the carrier so the amplitude is fixed all along it's not ASK because the amplitude is fixed and I'm, I'm coloring this into black and red the black is higher frequency representing one and the red signal part of the signal is the zero with the lower frequency 
And the last example, or last type of digital carrier modulation, we have what we call PSK, amplitude shift keying, then phase shift, frequency shift keying, and we have now phase shift keying. In phase shift keying, the amplitude stays the same, the frequency stays the same, so the frequency is the same, and uh, what changes from one information to another is the phase. For example, here, when it's one, we start by going up, positive sign. When it is zero, we go down. There is a change on the phase, as you can see here. So one means go up in the beginning of the bit, zero means go down. The information is in the phase rather than the frequency or amplitude. Thus, uh, these are the three types, ASK, FSK, and PSK. Another name for um, ASK, just to complete the picture, it's called on-off keying, OOK. So if you see OOK in one reference, or ASK, on-off keying for binary, OOK and ASK become the same because they are either on or off. So for binary, we can call the ASK OOK or on-off keying. Now, what's the spectrum of, of these signals, ASK, PSK, and FSK? The spectrum of ASK, now, as if you have a train of pulses, this is like sync, and this sync now is modulated, shifted, multiplying by cosine. So you expect to have um, to have the the spectrum is like a magnitude of cosine of sync, and it's shifted to the carrier frequency. What's the carrier frequency? It's the frequency of this sinusoid, and this looks like a magnitude of a, of a sync. Now the average here is positive, and if you multiply by the carrier, you get a discrete. You can think of having a discrete carrier component because we are having a, a positive signal. You can just decompose this into a signal with average zero plus a constant. This constant if multiplied by the carrier, we get a discrete component. For the second example, for the PSK, you can think of PSK two shifted version of ASK. One is multiplied by a cosine, the other one is multiplied by the negative of that cosine. So the average value, or if you, if you think you want to have positive and negative, this is the pulse is just unipolar, or one polarity, here we have two polarities. If you take this multiplied by a cosine uh, or a carrier, you get either the signal or the inversion of the signal. And this is, we, the average for this one is uh, zero, and this is why we have no components here, no carrier component in the spectrum. No discrete component in the spectrum for PSK, but there is one for ASK. The last one is FSK. If you want to imagine the spectrum of FSK, you can decompose the FSK into some of two different F uh, ASKs. So this is a frequency shift keying. It's one SK with low frequency, another ASK with high frequency. If you combine them together, you get one with high frequency, one with low frequency. You combine them together, you get the FSK. So we can think of FSK as two different ASK together, shifted to different frequencies. One is the frequency of zero, the other is the frequency of one. And this is why we expect the spectrum of SK to be larger. Those are usually set up in a way that um, the DC component will cancel out, and this is why we don't have a DC component uh, in the spectrum. All right, so we're saying frequency shift keying can be viewed as sum of two ASK or OK. Okay? with different frequencies in principle. Okay, so the spectrum is similar to the ASK shifted in, in two way, but it can be shown, of course, with some component that the carrier component can be eliminated. And the bandwidth is expected to be FSK, the highest bandwidth compared with the other. So there is, again, just like we had an analog, frequency is usually requiring more bandwidth. One important, one important type of orthogonal uh, of FSK is called the orthogonal FSK. An orthogonal FSK, as you can see here, that the frequencies that you choose is orthogonal. The example says you can send sign of the following argument, and you make, uh, of course, you cover one bit from 0 to TTP. TB is the duration of one bit or symbol, 